Hello and welcome tonight. Aftermath of the shite crisis, residents demand the ban on the activities of the shites as a group accuses military of attacking its members. No plea bargaining for Treasury looters. Federal government insists on prosecution of culprits. Bring back our girls. Campaigners visit Attorney General of the Federation. Demand release of jailed soldiers. And U.S.-led coalition airstrikes kills 10 Islamic State commanders in Iraq and Syria. On business news tonight, business and financial markets reopen after Maloud Nabi and Yuletide holidays. And on sports news tonight, Spanish giants Atletico Madrid prepare massive summer bid for red-hot Super Eagles forward Odion Igalo. I'm Linda Kibe and from Abuja, the holidays have ended and workers resume after the Eid al Maloud and Christmas festivities. And Sulaiman Alede. We begin tonight in Kaduna State where residents of Gilesu community in Zaria have called on the federal government to urgently ban the Islamic movement of Nigeria. The residents claim they have been harassed and intimidated by members of the sect. Citing alleged hardship caused by the sect over the last 20 years, the residents warn that the movement, if allowed to continue to exist, could pose a security threat to the state and the entire country. The recent clash between the army and the sect members in Zaria is just one example of a pattern of harassment and excesses which the residents of Gelezu community in Zaria say they have consistently complained about over the years. The residents who narrated their ordeal to channels television say the sect, led by Sheikh Ibrahim El Zaki, routinely terrorized residents of Zaria and Sabongari and have constituted themselves into a parallel government in the country. They want the federal government to put a permanent stop to the activities of the sect, which they say has forced many residents to flee the community and relocate to safer areas. Because what people, these people have done to the entire community is very embarrassing to people of Gelesu because they have done so many things to national figures. Let me give you a very good reference. In 2008, they stopped a minister from going to his, to his brother's house. That person has to change another route. There are many uniformed people that they have stopped them from going. Even the former governor, Moktaba Malayabo, they stopped him from entering Gelesu. I was once harassed by them. That was uh, in June. Uh, it happens that uh, they claimed that the people of Zaria don't really like uh, their leader. Although the Nigerian army has come under scrutiny in recent times for alleged violation of human rights and its efforts at containing the activities of the sect, a non-governmental organization, the Human Rights and Nonviolent Initiative, which went on a fact-finding mission to the area, has commended the officers of the army. The General Officer Commanding, one division of the Nigerian Army Division Headquarters in Kaduna, Major General Adeni Oyebade says with regards to the incident, the Army acted in accordance with the rules of engagement. Militias blocking the federal highway. It's the that the only person who can give them order to leave the road is Ezaki. Okay, get Ezaki. Air Force to get him full loss, switch off. The rules of engagement is clear. We are protecting the VIP or a KP that comes under threats. You must use all necessary means to secure your principal or your VIP or the facility. One of the leaders of the Islamic movement of Nigeria denies allegations of human rights abuse leveled against their members by residents of Zaria in Kaduna State. He also said, contrary to purported lies by some people, their leader, Sheikh Ibrahim El Zaki, had lived with Gelesu residents in Zaria happily, despite attempts by security operatives to cause disharmony at various times. I see all this as uh, a propaganda by the government down the tension from the side of the public who are aggrieved of the indiscriminate killing of uh, innocent civilians. 
including women and children by the state-owned machinery. Uh, this is how we see that the government is trying to bring all the efforts to justify its action, including propagating a lot of uh, fictitious ideas. For now, peaceful coexistence and respect for the rule of law remains the priority of everyone here. Many also believe that there is a need for a proper investigation of the extent of the activities of the sect and, of course, the allegations of violations of rights against the military. In the meantime, the Nigerian military has taken a bashing for poor performance in recent times, but the federal government has promised to change that by providing its critical needs to enable it to carry out its constitutional duties. The Minister of Defence, Mr. Mansour Dan Ali, says the government is poised to invest in the much-needed operational platforms, hardware and equipment and human capital development, among others. The Minister made the promise at the commissioning of the permanent site of the National Defence College in the nation's capital. Our correspondent, Amaka Okafo, has more. The event is the commissioning of the permanent site of the National Defence College. But he threw up the issue of the importance of a better financed military. The Minister of Defence, Mr. Mansur Dan Ali, who commanded the National Defence College for the Dan Strides, promised more funding for the military under the present administration. I, on behalf of the President Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, pledge our commitment to always support the development of the college permanent site within the limit available resources. We all strive to provide critical input for the armed forces of Nigeria to carry out its constitutional mandate. In particular, we shall provide critical infrastructures in the military as well as the much needed operational platforms, hardware and equipment, technologies, arms and ammunition kits and uniforms. We shall also support viable contingent and long-term human resources development, including operational and professional military education. Lending his voice, the Chairman Senate Committee on Defence, Sent Ahmed Lawan, pledged that the National Assembly will collaborate with the Executive and remain vigilant to ensure that funds are properly used. This is the time for the President and the Executive generally and the National Assembly, the legislature, to come together and ensure that whatever is appropriated for the armed forces of this country are given to them. We cannot afford, we cannot afford to allow what happened in the past to happen again. The strength of this country, our development depends on our security. And we cannot behave like the ostrich by burying our heads, thinking we can do better without a well-equipped and properly motivated armed force. The minister has promised that the government will continue to provide funding for the military and complete the permanent site of the Defence College in the shortest possible time. Amaka Okafo, Channels Television News. In the quest for peace, internally displaced persons at the International Christian Center in Uhogwa, Edo State, have called on the federal government to intensify efforts in putting an end to the scourge of insurgency which has rendered thousands of them homeless in the country. The general overseer of the camp, Pastor Solomon Falorancho, while speaking to Channel Television, says deliveries from donors are in short supply after the Nigeria Customs Service at the Tinkan Island port seized a 20-feet container laden with materials donated to the camp. Pastor Falorancho is asking for the urgent release of the materials so that the IDPs can be catered for. Internally displaced persons, most of them victims of insurgency in the northeastern part of Nigeria. Here are the International Christian Center in Uogwa Edo State. Though far from home, they are making the most of their present condition by getting along joyfully and even joining in celebrating the Yuletide. 
In spite of the refuge the centre is offering, the wish of these people is for the war to be over so that they can return home to their families. I request Buhari should put more security, should put more courage in, in fighting this Boko Haram. He should bring our parents from Cameroon to bring peace to the, our places so that we will return back to our villages. The general overseer of the camp, Pastor Solomon Fulansho, says the facility needs more support from well-meaning Nigerians. The accommodation is not uh, complete. The only thing is that uh, uh, they were once sleeping out there, but now we've been able to cover with tarpaulin some of those buildings. Uh, they can now sleep there, but we, we have not achieved what we want to achieve. And He's also appealing to the federal government to intervene in the matter of a 20-feet container with goods meant for the center, still stuck at the Tinkan Island port. For more than three months now, the 20-feet the container is in the port Tinkan Island there. We cannot clear it. Now, the customs said we must get a letter from the Ministry of Finance, which we applied, and they didn't approve it. The whole things are there. So I'm kind of wondering when there are people willing to help, and then there are so much um, bureaucracies and hindrances here and there. In the spirit of the Yuletide, there were donations of food items and clothes by this group. Leader of the delegation, David Abolo, believes a lot more could still be done. I advocate that we do a proper analysis. I advocate that case workers, social workers be put in place and handle each of these children as a case, document their records, their peculiarities, and based on this, the federal government will be able to come up with a policy that will adequately address the issues. For these internally displaced persons, this center is serving a purpose presently. But the ultimate gift would be a return home to their communities. In part two after the break, federal government to sanction truancy in the civil service. Do stay with us.